Uh, the bird's opening. 1f4. We all know this shouldn't be a good move. It's not like one of the main moves with e4 and d4 to control the center. It's opening up key diagonals in front of the white king. But are we able to prove this in an actual game against a bird's theory expert, which is probably your opponent who just played 1f4? And the answer is probably not, because the answer is your opponent who played this move almost certainly knows more than you, and this can transpose into a variety of things. There's this immediate gambit with one e5, which we'll talk about soon. But if you just play like like whatever, like here, knight, knight of six, knight of three, and, and you know, I mean, black can play anything and they're, and they're totally, totally fine. But, you know, white, white has a lot of options here, right? They can actually play a stone wall structure like this, and they can, you know, generate some attacks from some structures that they like. They can play this with a fiend keto of their light square bishop, and then later try and get some sort of king's Indian attack kind of thing where they already have this f pawn up. Uh, they, they, they can play this like a Nimzo Indian and, and try to take a lot of control over the square with bishop b5, and all these pieces can be helping. Basically, like, white's going to be more comfortable than you because they know 1f4 and you don't. So, so that leads us to the question of what to do. And there is e5 here, which is, you know, we're looking here, this is a pretty common gambit. This is a pretty common gambit. It's already called the Fromm's Gambit. And this has been analyzed to death. Your opponent actually is the fifth most common move, but could transpose this to a King's Gambit, which is a whole separate other, other topic, which would start with e4, e5. But I am going to offer, I am going to offer you a very, very serious innovation to what is otherwise super, super well known. So let, let, let me establish what's super well known, and you can see how many hundreds of thousands or millions of games in the database are here already. And I'll actually cover knight to f3, which has a really, really interesting queen sack variation, which is actually completely winning for black, if, if white continues to follow the most common moves. But I'll cover knight f3 at the end of the video. We'll talk about e takes d6 right now. And so the point here is, so bishop takes d6 is, is you see, by far, the, by, far, by far the most common move. We're talking about... 93% of games with, with bishop takes d6. And there's a lot of theory here. So basically the point is that if, if white actually does nothing, then this is actually checkmate. So th that's the danger of opening this diagonal onto your king is that if you don't have g3 against queen to h4 check, then you could sacrifice, okay, well, you could sacrifice it with your queen if you'd like, uh, or, or, or your bishop first, but this is checkmate, right? If, if you can control this square on g3. Okay, so white plays knight to f3. And then there's a couple moves here, like g5 and bishop to g4, g5, uh, the point being to play pawn g4 and remove the knight to that, that that try to remove this knight so that you know you can eventually try and get this checkmate they're cheap tricks they're actually pretty cheap tricks i mean okay we look at g5 here by far the most common move like like i don't know who you think you're fooling but a lot of people think they're fooling someone uh let me turn on let me turn on i have the engine here yeah let me turn on the engine here okay it's plus one with the most common move and if you're facing a birds player i'm i'm sure they know this i'm sure they know not to just get checkmated really quickly uh along this diagonal so you might just end up just down a pawn for absolutely nothing here and so i'm not going to re rehash already established theory but white is totally fine here i mean you can see you can see by the engine white is totally fine so so it is time for an innovation it is time for an innovation and that move is the laying held gambit, the incredibly rare, we're talking 1.2% of games, knight to f6, not even taking this pawn, not even taking this pawn. Okay, and we will talk about both moves in this position, knight f3 and d takes c7, which combined account for like all the games in this position. Okay, okay, we're gonna start with d takes c7 first. We are now down two pawns. We are now down two pawns. We've let the, it take one pawn, another pawn, a third pawn before we finally took that wrecking ball of an F pawn. Okay, and, and, and you see here overwhelmingly White's playing knight three, which actually also happens to be the best move. So what was the point of this? <laughs> like we, we gave another pawn, but we put our queen on c7, and that's actually quite helpful because we are not going to be approaching this from h4, where this knight is guarding. But instead, with this sneaky move bishop to d6, we are already threatening checkmate. So you can see here the three most common moves, which we'll touch on e3, d4, and d3, all don't blunder checkmate. However, if I scroll down, g3, nc3, <laughs> all, all, these other moves are blundering checkmate in one. So g3, the fourth most common move, or checkmate in two, I'm sure you guys can find it. We just take here and take again. And that's mate, same idea as before. Same idea as before. If knight c3, the fifth most common move, check and mate. <laughs> so, okay. 
G3 is not helping. I mean, it's ideas that White's used to is the thing that, that, that typically shield from H4, but we're not going from H4. We're going to go right to the G3 square, and also we're going to be targeting this H2 pawn. Okay, so let's talk about good moves for White in this position. They're up two pawns. They don't want to get mated. So E3, D3, and D4, the difference being, the difference being, we'll start with the most common move, E3. The difference being that now, if we do this, it, I mean, we're losing a bishop here because they have this square that they created, or this square in, in a couple other cases. However, we have a really, really nice follow-up, and it comes from our other piece that's developed in almost every case, which is this nice, nice move, knight g4. And it causes so many problems for a white, and this is unbelievably frustrating if you are a white player in this position. Because, so not only are we threatening to take this h2 pawn, but we are threatening a couple other things. So, so first of all, yes, we do have three attackers on the h2 pawn, and they only have two defenders, so we can actually take this at certain moments. If they play h3, it really just hurts them even more because now check and knight f2 and black is completely winning because of this killer fork and which is probably going to be even worse for, for white than even a rook. So g3 is also not helping because of all these sacrifices that are going to be on the table. I assume in this position something's working. Okay, or it's minus one just by castling and ignoring things for now. We, have, we also have this nice idea h5, h4 that will come into play. So lots and lots of exciting stuff. I'm, I'm really, really excited to, to share with you all these sacrifices. And this position is super, super dangerous for white, as you may have guessed. Okay, what to do? What to do if you're playing white? So we'll cover here queen to e2 and bishop to b5, which are both uh, solid moves. So the issue with queen to e2, actually, though, is that it makes matters worse. Because after check and set, get sacrificing our bishop, instead of e2, your square is now d1, if you're a white king. And that's not fun because knight of two check and it leads you just going back and forth at the mercy of this knight and queen. <laughs> so with d1 being your square, bishop to g3 check is working really nicely. We take that rook. It's still check. You're still going back and forth. You're still going back and forth. We collected a rook and after bishop to g4 here, this is just a, a minus three position where, you know, white is on the verge of collapse after, you know, one more pressure, one more piece of pressure along this pin. So great, great stuff here. We have this threat of bishop to g3 check looming. So what white wants to do is bishop to b5 check, as is the most common move. And so we block this with, with nice e6, another developing move. And now the thing here for white, the thing here for white, okay, so we can throw in this uh, capture as is most common. So they capture there. We're playing pawn take c6. I think the hope of a lot of people capturing on c6 is that we'll play queen takes and, and, but, and get away from this killer diagonal, but we have no such plans. Pawn takes actually gives us an additional resource. And now the thing is, if they castle, the thing that makes this knight so amazing, like like you saw in a couple other lines, that we can actually just hang out like this, because castling is just going to make matters even worse for, for white. Because after takes and queen to d6, basically this is just checkmate coming up. With that queen coming to h6, pull that bishop back, and <laughs> white just has no development on this whole uh, segment of the board, so this is just pretty much completely, completely winning. Uh, minus four, <laughs> or more. So, great stuff there. They can't castle. And if they do nothing with a move like knight to c3, in this position, we actually have a really nice checkmating sequence now that they've opened up this bishop uh, that, that, that I'd love to show. See here the most common move being knight takes h2, which is also possible, but let's show this checkmating sequence of check. So as I have a couple arrows indicating, if they ignore that, then the knight just wanders into f2 and delivers a really nice fork. So, you know, if we win a rook, that's pretty significant. We're only down two pawns. So it takes, queen takes, and we're going to come in with some pretty heavy artillery here with this queen coming into f2. So king e2... Uh, was hoping to run away to d3 in this position, but now with the bishop to a6 check resource, we don't have a pawn in the way. So we have this bishop to a6 check resource, covers the d3 square. Oh, okay, well, they can throw a couple other things in the way, but covers the d3 square, and then we can come into f2 for checkmate in this particular variation. So that's really nice stuff. Uh, slightly better is this move queen to e2, the most common option. So now, you know, I mean, okay, if we do this, they have the f1 square, they've moved this bishop out of the way. Uh, so queen to e2, you know, it's kind of just co covers a couple things. But here's the great thing. Here's the great, great thing that, 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 that I've already touched on, is we can just leave this with a really, really calm move like castles. And this is already just a fantastic position. Or, you know, maybe white can hang on or not, not even. Like, we're, we're down two pawns and Stockfish favors us just due to the compensation. Like, that's how overwhelming the compensation is in this position. We take on h2 whenever we feel like it. h3 is never going to help them because of this move. Bishop to g3. Check. And g3 is never going to help them, I believe, because of a sacrifice there. Or just, it's just never going to help them. <laughs> it's just never going to help them. And so, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll show, I'll show um, 
uh, an example game here. Again, they don't have castles, so, so maybe they're trying to castle along. So there's one game in the database here, and we'll follow it for um, for a little bit to show you some ideas here. But so basically, yeah, we just castle. We just play an AC6. We're just going to bring our rook out here. We're going to continue, continue, just building up pressure and torturing our opponent. So B3 here, Black played this really nice move. A5, trying to get the bishop there. A5 allowed the rook to defend without a pawn in the way. A4, I, I, I think white misinterpreted Black's idea of trying to push this pawn. Now just bishop to A6. D3 had to be played to shield the queen here, and now bishop to b4, and just overwhelming pressure here and here. It overwhelmed this dark square bishop, which got distracted. Now if it takes, uh, rook takes e3, wins the queen. So in the game, okay, just castles and here is up a full rook. So that's just an intro to, to some of these really, really fun lines. I'll show you a couple other options that, that white has when dealing with this. I think I missed covering pretty much nothing, actually. I think we did cover everything there. So, yeah, queen to e2 here was an option. Uh, no, we covered that as well. So, that's pretty much what happens after e3. That's pretty much what happens after e3. Knight g4, and in the best case scenario, you might knock them out immediately with bishop to g3. No rush taking the h2 pawn, because you can just play an ac6, castles, rook e8, really just hang out and really inflict a ton, a ton of pressure. And at some moment, bishop to g3 check, or bishop takes h2, uh, might just be completely winning. So really, really fun stuff here. Okay, e3, maybe not the best. What should white do? They have this other option, the second most common move, d4, but it's even worse. <laughs> it's actually even worse. So d4 is, is, is something that white likes to do in kind of like the main line from Gambit. d4 is, can be very helpful for like controlling the square or helping this bishop get out, or like a move like queen d3, which can uh, uh, fortify g3 somehow. But d4 here, is not a good way to make space and it's because you're coming to king d2 but this knight can cut you off right there so here black has the fantastic tactic knight e4 you see i mean it has a 73 percent win rate and is his most common but black here has the fantastic knockout flow <laughs> i just love these positions and how these queen bishop and knight coordinate the knockout blow okay it's bishop takes h2 it's just bishop takes h2 and it is simply completely completely winning if white plays here knight takes h2 they are made it in two moves check and mate <laughs> isn't that a gorgeous mate this queen is just killing them and these white pieces are just so poorly placed oh my goodness they're blocking everything <laughs> okay 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 so bishop takes h2 you'll know bishop to g3 doesn't have quite the same effect because knight e4 check okay the king can now wander out onto the third rank because uh, this knight's still in the way, right? Before we made the knight go to h2. So bishop takes h2. Okay, I mean, uh, we'll just cover all the moves that were played here. Bishop e3, bishop to g3 check is just completely winning in this position. I mean, but white's position is, again, it's just a total disaster of just dark squares impossible to cover. So uh, rook takes h2 is playable and is the best move. And at least some interesting force line here with check knight e4. So we were talking about this before, king e3. So king d3, so I mean, they had both these squares. King d3 is, is a, a much worse option because of this fork. So king to e3 should be played, but then knight f2. Okay, then where should this queen go? If you go to d2, so, so there's been one game in this position ever. If you go to d2, it's a disaster. Yeah, because so, okay, you castle. And then I think the point is just rook e8. This is going to be like mate. Yeah, this is going to be mate. So the best move here is queen to e1, because if white... If white just does nothing, then rook e8 is literally checking me. So, so many fun knockouts. Okay, so the one person who, fa who faced this did not find the right move. But the right move is queen e1 for white to survive at all. Check, now it has a fork. So this, this is just an interesting force line where now we trade queens, we take the rook, and let's see here. White, oh, sh white should save their bishop somehow. Okay, knight d2 saves their bishop from, from this. Uh, so white has a pawn and a bishop for a rook. It seems like their pieces are kind of a mess. The king's here, but okay, it's 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 whatever. It is what it is. I mean, it's still a much better endgame for black, as you see here, minus point five or some or whatever. So funny lines, funny lines there. So bishop takes h two is just a really interesting knockout blow that immediately works after the second most common move in this position, d four. You see, ninety fourth, fantastic win rate, but it's not even the best move. It's just bishop takes h two. Uh, and and no, nobody has even found the defense to reach that end game after bishop takes h2. So, so great, great stuff. Okay, what else can white do? What else can white do? Well, there's the slightly better version of d4, known as d3, where you still control the, create the square for the king. It's less common cousin, d3. 
um, but also control the E4 square. So, so you don't allow the knight in there. So these bishop takes H2 tactics don't work the same. No worries. The knight has another really great square. And oh yeah, it's the G4 square where it just hangs out for free, for fun, putting a lot of pressure on H2. So here white plays the move E4 to try to create some space, to try to play bishop E2, to try castle. I think so G3, I mean, I want to talk about G3 for, for a minute here. So, okay, it's, it's showing that this leads to some forced draw. But yeah, I, I, I think there's nothing wrong with, honestly, h5 move. Yeah, I mean, you play with h5, h4, and actually there's another line. There's another line I prepared uh, where, 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 where this comes into play very nicely. So that's some really good stuff there. Okay, so d3, so there's this move e4, which is the only other way for bishop to e2 to, hap to happen and for maybe a castling to be prepared. Nonetheless... Bishop takes h2, perfectly playable, but we'll just keep up our pressure. We can take on h2 whenever we feel like it, and that's by castling. And uh, here, I mean, I'm just looking at the database here, very, very impressive win rates for black in this position. But basically, you like after bishop e2, you just hang out. You just hang out, and like knight c3, bishop e6, there's really not a lot that white can do in this position. It's, it's kind of funny, but there's just... there's just no moves. Castling makes matters so much worse, because now after takes, you just pull back, and now a queen getting to like over here, for example, or like, I don't know, we're already threatening native two check. It's just, it's just can be very, very killer and can just end the game right away. So really white's in an awkward situation where they want to somehow prepare a long castle, but they don't have the squares to do it. Black just developing for free, rookie eight, they have this idea of F5 trying to open even more stuff. So just, just a really, really easy position where black just kind of hangs out and can grab their pawn back and, 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 you know, launch an attack whenever they feel like it. Again, h3 never working because of check and knight to f2. So, 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 what else can white do in this position? I believe I had actually made some theory in this position with h5. Uh, I don't completely remember. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the point is after h4, there's there's a lot of rook sacrifices. Even uh, after knight takes h4, there's rook takes h4 in a lot of lines. So like, for example, e4, h4. It was some position like this. If they played knight takes h4, then rook takes... Uh, or, wow, so many great things here. Knight takes h2 is working here. So we have bishop takes g3, where you can collect the rook, you can collect the knight. So I, I, I like this h5, h4 idea a lot. Actually, just putting so, so much pressure on h2, on g3, and on dark squares around white's king. It can work in so many of these cases. So that's that's pretty much the Fromm's Gambit. That's pretty much the laying held gambit in, in, in the Fromm's Gambit variation, where here we play knight to f6. If they take c7, we play queen takes, and we're coming out bishop to d6 anyway, only this is not a capture. And we want to go bishop to g3 mate, and we want to also look out for bishop takes h2 ideas, but also we want our knight to just hang out on g4. Uh, until the time comes, we have bishop to g3. If not, no worries. We castle, we play knight c6, we play rook e8, and we just enjoy a great position where white is just getting completely tortured. So super, super fun stuff there. Okay, in this position, white can play this move knight to f3, and now we have bishop takes d6. And so actually, you, you, you'll note that bishop takes d6, knight f3, so this transposes to this position. And the reason why I actually came up with knight to f6, I mean, I didn't come up with it, I guess, Langhell did, but the reason why I want to recommend it is because I also recommend knight f6 genuinely. Even if you had this position, I would recommend you to play the move knight to f6 here, because this knight, as we saw in so many lines, is actually so, so useful. I mean, it's not prying this knight away from f3, but we can't really do that. And the knight on f6 is very, very useful. So why not just play it in this position, throw our opponent one trick of taking on c7 is a really bad idea. Okay, so they should play knight f3, bishop takes d6, and we transpose into one of the more common Fromm's Gambit positions. Okay, in this position here, okay, the, the, we'll actually start with g3 because I was confused about when that line actually occurred with g3 in this position. So th th there's a couple of moves that white has. One of them includes g3 to try and play bishop g2 and castle as soon as possible. But against g3, here we have it. We play h5 and we're going for h4 ASAP. So basically here white can play bishop g2 but then h4. And here very often they are <laughs> they are just going to lose right away because knight takes h4 is the most common move. But after rook takes literally stockfish, when I turned it on originally, yeah, it doesn't even recommend g takes h4. It doesn't even recommend taking this rook. That's how bad the situation is after g takes h4. We have such awesome checkmating ideas in this position <laughs> where you can just knock him out right away. So knight e4 is actually the brilliant, brilliant move. Not knight g4, 
not knight g4, but knight e4, because knight g4, I think it allowed white to run away, actually, on to the d2 square, but, I mean, not, not even as though everybody was finding that option, but knight e4 is just pretty much forced mate here. The threat being queen takes h4 and queen to f2. It's really not a lot that white can do about that. I'll, I'll show you a couple things here. So bishop takes e4 can be played, but then takes. We're down a bunch of stuff at this moment. However, there is checkmate coming. We grab our bishop back, hitting that rook. Rook g1. Bishop h3 check. King f2. Check. So we force that king coming. So we're hitting that rook. Uh, king to g1 was no better. But after bishop h3, there was queen g2, which is effectively unstoppable. So rook g1 was the only option. Check. And we are going to force king e1. So king f2, we force the king to come back to e1. And you now just such a such a gorgeous, gorgeous finish of using all our pieces. We use that knight we sacrifice. We use that rook we sacrifice. We got this bishops into the game all before white has moved anything on this whole part of the board. We play here queen to h4, check. They must play rook g3. And two people have taken with the bishop, but two people have done it in style of playing queen takes g3. Takes, and what a beautiful beautiful final position here <laughs> that you can actually get in the game that somebody has gotten in a game shout out to Adronga here and uh, and amaresto but <laughs> what a gorgeous gorgeous final position here of these bishops just getting that white king where black is down a full queen black is down one full queen has not even one pawn for it in this position so i i just love that line so so much and i i really hope it happens because that line could actually happen okay wait after 84 there is another option here of castling but there it does not help white's fate at all after queen takes h4 there's a new mate threat over here h3 just bishop takes h3 there's just too many pieces around here and now black has this threat as the arrows indicated of playing queen g3 which threatens to take g2 or to come to h2 both of which are checkmate so here, queen e1, I think, is the only option. Yeah, that stops queen g3 at all. For example, if bishop takes h3, check. And just queen h2 next turn with the knight covering the f2 square and all these pieces working so well together. So queen e1 steps over as a defender. You know, the white just has no pieces helpful over here. So then queen g4 is going to end the game in a moment with this mate threat, rook f2, queen g3. Uh, and so that's actually mate in two. <laughs> It's actually mate in two no matter what, because this really nice idea of check and mate right there with a nice pin on the bishop for preventing a capture there. So, okay, these pieces are just so good. The attacks can overwhelm. I mean, we, we, we can go with these lines all day, but th th those, those are lines that have happened in real games. So, I mean, in this position, okay, what, what should black... What should white do with h takes g3 threatening to just crush their whole position? Well, g takes h4 is also possible, but after an g4 here, uh, this is also... Uh, Pretty much a disaster for for white i think yeah the next move no matter what let's say knight c3 is bishop takes h2 bishop takes h2 threatening so knight takes h2 you have queen takes h4 and this mate idea coming and otherwise you just want to pull that right back to g3 and come in with this so basically just like all these <laughs> these these killer threats along that diagonal just never stop they never stop and this idea of just trying to come in on g3 without trying to force that knight to move as so many people in the Fromm's Gambit have done and failed to, you know, actually successfully do. But without trying to force that knight to move, we can really just kill them with a lot of these bishops g3 ideas. And so if they ever play g3, this h5, h4 is a fantastic wrecking ball and also get the rook into the action really, really quickly. Okay, so g3, not a good option in conclusion. So again, white has all the same options of before of d4, e3, d3. I'll touch on them briefly here. If d3, just knight g4, again, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. Just sticking that knight on g4, they cannot make it move because of bishop to g3. Again, if pawn g3, they have h5, h4. Otherwise, castling is going to be a disaster with so much pressure over there. This knight on g4 sits excellent. And yeah, our next moves are going to be castles. We're going to put that work on e8. We're going to play an ac6, and we're going to develop. And we're going to attack, and hopefully we will have more and more awesome queen sacrifice checkmates and all these crazy, crazy things that can come up. Okay, so I mean, d3, I mean, I, I don't think it's worth exploring too much theory there. e3, again, knight g4, great option here. Uh, d4, so so what can set up like this, and basically with this move d4, they're saying, okay, maybe I'm going to try to castle this way. So a really nice setup we can do here, I mean, there's nothing wrong with short castles, but a really nice setup we can do here that I'd recommend is queen to e7 to pressure this e3 pawn, because white should let this pawn go with bishop to d3, after which actually the position is approximately okay slightly in black's favor but approximately equal if they just let this pawn go but a lot of people are trying to hang on to that pawn which is a big mistake 
is here, but black plays this white smooth knight c6, threatening knight b4. And so no matter what white does, c3 or a3 to, to stop this knight b4 idea, it looks pretty dangerous because there's can be a lot of pressure on c2 very quickly. This queen on d3 is like a little bit awkward. So bishop to e2 here, let's say. And now there's, um, again, really nice sacrifices. <laughs> I mean, I love when these come up, but bishop takes h2 is working here because if knight takes h2, we go queen to h4 check. And very often this is, this is like a, a little bit suspicious. Like, you know, we didn't want to do it in this position because uh i think the issue is the issue is that you just kind of run yourself into a pin you just kind of run yourself into a pin as, like 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 if this king can escape whether or not you led with knight takes h2 or bishop takes h2 so whether or not that's a knight or a bishop like you're just kind of stuck in this pin sometimes and so you got to be careful of that you gotta be like it's it can be a bit unpleasant so but when we do it properly like in this move order it's a little bit different because now we have a really nice move knight f2 we have a really, really nice move, knight f2, where this queen is here on d3, very awkwardly. And so we're going to play knight takes h1, take that rook cleanly. They're not going to be able to, like, move the queen to defend their rook. So we can finish with bishop takes h2 and knight to f2 with a really nice support. So all sorts of really nice ideas like that. Um, and in that position is completely winning for black as well. So we'll cover here this move d4, which is the most common move. So we're covering the most common moves, which are knight f3 and d4. So here, uh, there's no kill right away so kill right away and again there's nothing wrong with just castling there's never anything wrong with just castling in these lines like you're just down a pawn and you can just play rookie eight and ac6 and 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 just hang out and have really good compensation because things are tough for white without this f2 pawn and with kind of a lack of development so here you see stockfish is already you know very sympathetic to black's compensation in this position the most common move is bishop g5 and so i thought i'd touch on these lines a little bit here i'd recommend this nice move knight bb7 and it's really interesting because basically, like, well, bishop to g5, it's it's pretty ambitious, but it it, it creates an annoying pin. Like the, the, the pin is genuinely annoying. And so the point is what we want to do is actually queen to e8. So we want this knight to be able to defend that knight. We don't want to be forced to play g takes f6. So we want to be able to play queen e8 and like knight e4, uh, which can attack the bishop and the knight is going to sit really nicely on the e4 square. So the most common move in this position is actually the very ambitious pawn to e4. Uh, really taking advantage of this pin. And it's, it's a little bit dicey though, because they're kings in the middle. Of course, they're threatening e5, and we're going to take advantage of the fact that they're kings in the middle by playing this nice move, queen e8. And the point is, if we continue to follow the most common moves of e5, I mean, what else can white play in this position with this pawn attack so many times? Here, this is already a blunder by white because we can play knight takes e5, have a really nice sacrifice here. After it takes, bishop takes e5, and here white is lost. Because if they take this, then we are going to win that bishop cleanly. And at this point, we are already up one pawn in addition to just having better development, better king safety and everything so they shouldn't play like that they can try this move bishop to e2 to shield themselves from uh the the wrath of this e-file but we just play bishop takes b2 in this position threatening to win that rook if they play an 82 as four out of five people have done which defend the rook so now they can say okay maybe i can get two pieces for that but we have this really really nice move knight d5 which is just absolutely killer because knight c3 here is threatening to actually trap that queen and so if castles here knight c3 and this is like minus six minus seven uh, where are we taking that bishop and we're taking this rook okay we're just taking way too much material that, that that was check when we took on e2 right so just way too much material here and really really excellent stuff for black so i, I against bishop to g5 i like this idea of knight d7 and uh queen to e8 in this position knight c3 is also playable here which takes away the e4 square and so here i would recommend this nice move c5 I drew some arrows about how, how you can continue to play. So this rook can sit on e8 and this queen can, can, can come out to a5, which would free this knight and give the pin here. So then that knight e4 is possible again with this knight pinned. Uh, a6, b5 is another good idea here. d5 is the most common move, but it's already, you know, not a good one. Okay, it's minus two already. I mean, it's so easy for, for uh, white to go wrong there. So in this position, e3 is also possible, but c5 here. And with c5, yeah, you can put your queen on c7. You see that orange arrow. And that was one of our favorite ideas, which puts, you know, again, just so, so much pressure on white's position here by playing a c6, by playing rook e8, by just you know, bringing your pieces in. Even if you don't do like a killer blow right away, it's just so, so difficult for white to just manage to play chess here. Like you see, okay, we can follow just, just, just doing regular things to g4 here, just queen c7, pressure on h2 just good stuff here it's just good stuff it's just really nice to play for black yes you're a pawn down but your development your play it's all just so so much easier so 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 that pretty much covers just about everything in the Fromm's gambit 
Um, there are ways for white to hang on and not to blunder one of these bishop takes h2 or bishop to g3 stuff, but I've shown you like a, like a lot of situations where that can work nonetheless. Otherwise, like, okay, in a lot of situations, like the knight can just hang on on g4, or you can just castle and just enjoy your excellent compensation and look for these really attacking and aggressive ideas later on. So I will here cover this other move of, but it is about half as common as e takes d6, but it's this other move, knight to f3. This is the other move, knight to f3 in this position. And I, for a while, actually was researching this move g5, which I think is, which I still think is really, really interesting. Uh, of course, the idea is to play g4, which dislodges this knight to some various squares. And again, like you're really trying to get queen h4 to happen or, or just get your pawn back. And th there are some interesting lines here, although I, I don't think Stockfish is a huge fan of it. But okay, I mean, that, that refutation involves accepting this gambit by playing e takes d6. Okay, anyway, g5, it's, it's, it's a whole other story. It's a whole other story, but I will actually recommend the very simple d takes e5. And so there's two moves that white can play here, one of which is knight takes e5. And after bishop to d6 here, white should just play knight f3. And what do you know, we've transposed back into this variation of the Fromm's Gambit. So in, in this position, there's really not much else for white. They can play this move d4, but I think we just take everything. Yeah, we just take everything. Take, take, take here. So white is up their pawn, but this is doubled. And just an AC6 here uh, was doubled. They have no development. I mean, I can't imagine what's doing so well here or, or would want to play this. I mean, you just cast along with check and all, like, like all your development comes probably so naturally in that situation. So not D4, but, uh, and, and so not an ATC5, but rather E4 in this position. And so here, all we need to do actually, all we need to do is just play normally. So like we play a move like knight f6 and bishop c5. Knight takes e5 is never really a great idea. Can turn on here. Knight takes e5. Yeah, basically, I mean, I think it just opens this e file, right? And there, like there's also ideas of just queen d4 and coming in for checkmate. And okay, th there's these ideas as well. But it really just with that e file open, okay, it's just probably a disaster. Also, if you're afraid, there's no harm in playing knight to c6 at some moment. But so anyway, knight c6 is a move I'd recommend probably after that bishop's come out uh, because bishop to b5 can be maybe an annoying pin this way. But anyway, we're actually giving white what they want. Like this is just kind of the development that, okay, if you play f4, then th th this can come out of even some king spawns openings. But if you play f4, okay, like isn't this kind of the position that you want? And maybe, yes. Yeah, so, so they play bishop to g5 here. Right, and so they're like, oh, I'm very excited to maybe use this f-file to maybe go here, castle long, and maybe play an d5 to put a lot of pressure uh, on this pin and on this knight. But this position is not fun for white because like we both have development, except black's king got castled. Like, like okay, I'll show you what happened. Maybe I went a little bit quickly, but you know, okay, we're both playing just some normal moves here. Like we're both just developing our pieces. We both got castled, except, it, or I got castled, and you didn't, because this bishop is hanging out on c5, stopping that. So after bishop to g5 here, we play h6 and bishop to g4. And now, if you're black, your next move, I think, wants to be knight d4, if I'm not mistaken here. And knight d4, and the situation is not looking very fun for white. And so let's look at the two most common moves here, which is pretty funny. It's queen d2 and knight d5, right? So queen d2 is actually a blunder in and of itself. Maybe you can pause the video, but it's a pretty tricky tactic we have here. We take this. The knight's no longer defending here, and now after knight takes e4, that's just a free pawn, and it's, well, more than a pawn, a minus three position here, because after they take there, that is check, and if they take our queen, the point is, so we basically, we made that knight be undefended, right, in, in this position, if they could take our knight and still defend that bishop here, then we, we'd be down a piece, but so they take our queen, we take here, and uh, this, this just works out for us, this just works out for us very, very nicely, if they save their bishop, then this knight will either take that bishop or this pawn, and you know, you're looking excellently here. Whereas, you know, if they just take here, then we take the bishop. And again, we just come out ahead due to the fact that we took a pawn there, right? And so we come out ahead in this line. So the queen d2 is one of the most, is the most common move in this position, but it's actually quite the mistake. Otherwise, knight d4 is coming in, like h3, I think we still take, we have knight d4 coming in. So like lots of good stuff here, actually. And so the other move, I promised a queen sacrifice. I promised a queen sacrifice to close out this video. And... I will deliver. I will deliver. 
you will not be disappointed by this queen sacrifice. The move here is knight to d5, and the point now is after we play knight takes d5. We play knight takes d5, sacrificing our queen. So if pawn takes d5 here, we simply play the move knight to e7, and black's actually just doing very, very well here. It's just minus one because this pawn is very, very weak. So even though our knight's attacked and our queen's attacked here, this is looking very, very nicely. Okay, but if they take our queen, we play here knight to e3. So we took a knight, we played knight e3, and so what does... <laughs> you, you see here there's a crazy move bishop to e7 being recommended. Nobody would ever play that. I mean, we have about half queen e2, half queen d2. So with queen d2, the thing is we take this bishop, and then we take here, <laughs> and this position is just completely lost for white. It's, 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 it's really quite funny. It's really quite funny. Because so it's like queen c1, we have like f5, just opening everything. Like these pieces just operate so, so well. And if queen to e2, we have this really, really nice move, knight d4, where just everything's hit, everything's hit, all these pieces just, just so, so good. This queen is completely overwhelmed, and just there's just no square for her to guard everything. There's no square for her to guard c2 without falling victim to some of these things. So this other option existed of queen e2, which was slightly better, but we have this really nasty move, knight d4, where we hit the queen this way. They can't take this because of this pin. They can't take here because take is check, right? So otherwise, like, both knights were, at, like, like the queen was being threatened and c2 was being threatened because both knights were on the c2 point. So, but nonetheless, knight, giving the queen back is a good idea here. And so, like, king takes e2. This is, like, all the... Uh, stockfish recommendations, I believe, after bishop takes d4. Okay, this is the best white can do. This is the best white can do is get this really unpleasant endgame where they gotta save their bishop, they gotta deal with knight takes c4 coming and takes b2, and okay, this is the best they can do is to give back their queen. But just a really, really nice queen sacrifice. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this great, great gambit, the, the Langhell gambit and all these other uh, great stuff you can add to your repertoire to crush the bird's opening and not let them get the positions that they love and also not lose a pawn for nothing. Okay, thanks so much for watching Gambit Chats. Peace out. Have a great day.